Hello, everybody. This is The Doctor, and welcome back to more Let's Play Star Trek Online. I have something very awesome to show you today. Guess what? Klingons got a new ship. Klingons got a new ship. Yes, I'm not making this up. The Klingons, the KDF faction, got a new ship. No longer are the Federation side uh, the only ones who uh, are getting new ships these days. Cryptic has seen it in their heart to finally give the KDF side uh, a new ship. And it's very welcomed because anything we get on the KDF side is cherished and wanted and needed so bad. Uh, there is a heavy lean toward uh, the Federation faction getting all the ships and KDF getting nothing. Uh, but finally, they have given KDF a new ship and I have it today and we're going to look at it, equip it. We're going to try it out, play with it and see what we can do. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, read this web page about the ship. So we're going to go over that. That can be kind of lengthy because there's a lot to talk about. I just want to make sure we hit uh, all the important aspects of it. So I'm going to talk about that. Uh, and then I'm going to cut and go in game and we will equip the ship on a KDF character. We will uh, kit it out and then we will go try it in some action and see what happens and then I'll spend some time with it off camera and then I'll come back and we'll do Infected Space Elite, uh, Cure Space Elite and uh, Kittimer Core Space Elite and maybe even some other PVEs out there. So let's get started, let's get straight to this. Several teams of engineers have been working on iterations of the Klingon Defense Force's battlecruiser technology. One team, led by Ambassador Worf, developed a smaller, more nimble ship intended to combat enemies who rely on speed as a defense. In honor of his contributions to the project, Ambassador Worf was allowed to name the new starship class, and he, ch he chose the name Moog in honor of his father, a Klingon warrior who died in the Kittimer, Ma Kittimer Massacre of 2346. The Moog-class battlecruiser is more offensively focused than the Negvar, but slightly less durable. It was designed with versatility in mind and offers a balance between offense and defense. It features a dynamic defense deployment system, which is a versatile rapid defense deployment weapon designed specifically for the Moog battlecruiser. More information about this can be found below. Um, purchase of this ship from the sea store will make its owner, owner eligible for a fleet ship module reduction when purchasing the fleet Moog battlecruiser. So there you go. There is also a fleet Moog battlecruiser. Ship details, minimum rank, Lieutenant General, 50. Faction Klingon, availability sea store, hull strength, 37.5. Shield modifier, 1. So it doesn't have a whole lot of hull, doesn't have a uh, good shield modifier. So uh, it, it is definitely geared toward offense and uh, not so much defense. Crew 2000, 5 forward weapon slots, 3 aft, 3 device slots, 9 degree per second turn rate. So I guess it'll turn all right. Uh, impulse modifier, point fifteen. Bridge officer station, one ensign tactical, one lieutenant commander tactical, one commander engineering. Ooh. One lieutenant science, one lieutenant universal. So, not a commander tactical as we would have thought for an offensive ship. In fact, it is a commander engineering. So, I'm going to put this on my engineering character. I guess that's probably where it's going to fit best. Four engineering console modifications, Four tactical, one science. Definitely not a science ship. Plus 10 power to weapons. Plus 10 to engines. Can equip dual cannons. Matter antimatter warp core. Innate cloaking device. Cruiser command array abilities. It's got the three uh, new uh, command abilities. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Console universal dynamic defense deployment system. So what I gather so far from the ship is it reminds me a lot of the Avenger on the Federation side. Perhaps this is the KDF variant of the Avenger. Um, so not so much unique as we would have thought. The Dynamic Defense Deployment System is a versatile rapid defense deployment weapon designed specifically for the Moog Battlecruiser. This weapon system fires a single heavy warhead at a target that deploys defense pods every few seconds while traveling to its designated target. The dynamic warhead will detonate in a large explosion upon impact. 
These deployed defense pods will fire energy weapons and after a short time will engage their foe like a standard mine. The dynamic weapon system will function differently depending upon which cruiser command is active. So yes, this is the Avenger for the KDFs. Um, that's what it looks like to me. All right, while well, the weapon efficiency cruiser command is active, or no cruiser command is active, the dynamic defense deployment system will fire a uh, photon dynamic warhead. This projectile will deploy disruptor defense pods every few seconds while traveling to its target and will detonate in a two kilometer explosion upon impact. Uh, the deployed disruptor defense pods will periodically fire a disruptor beam array at a random target with 10 kilometers and will function as a standard photon mine if an enemy gets within 2.5. If the disruptor defense pods haven't engaged a foe as a mine after a short while time, they will select this target within 10 km and uh, explode upon impact. While the strategic maneuvering command is active, the dynamic defense deployment system will fire a chroniton dynamic warhead. This projectile will deploy anti-proton defense pods every few seconds while traveling to its target and will detonate a two kilometer explosion upon impact. Uh, yeah, this is all, this is all adventure stuff here. In dynamic warhead tachyon mode, um, while the shield frequency modula modulation cruiser command is active, the dynamic defense deployment system will fire a tachyon dynamic warhead. This projectile will deploy tachyon defense pods every few seconds while traveling to its target. Um, the deployed tachyon defense pods will periodically fire a tachyon beam array at a random target. Um, blah, blah, blah. So we've heard all this before. This is not really new. So that's interesting. I was hoping it would be a little bit different on the KDF. Maybe something give us something unique. But no, they pretty much just took the Avenger from the K from the Fed side and just gave it a different shell and put it on the KDF side. So again, I guess KDF kind of gets an afterthought. Um, all right. There is a fleet version as well, of course, and here are the stats on it. It's got a higher hull, 41.2, and it's got a higher shield modifier, 1.1. So that will definitely help you um, if to have a little bit beefier um, Moog battle cruiser. One ensign tactical, one lieutenant commander tactical, one commander engineering still, one lieutenant science. So the same bridge officer setup. Pretty much everything's the same, except for the shield and hull. So there you go. That's a brief overview of the Moog battle. Okay, welcome back everybody. This is the Doctor and here we are in game. I am on the KDF faction and uh, we are on at uh, first city of Kronos. I am on my primary KDF character whose name is um, really lengthy but um, we'll just call her Romana um, and she is an engineer now she is while she is my primary KDF character I um, have not done as much with her as I have with my Federation characters even Ensign Ricky so she lacks quite a bit of stuff uh, simply because I haven't spent any time on the KDF side. I've been grinding mostly on the Federation side and now Romulan side and I have neglected my KDF characters unfortunately. Um, however she is still the best candidate for this ship that I'm equipping now and she does have the most stuff out of all of my other KDF characters so she is just going to have to be it for right now. She is an Orion and uh, she is an engineer and um, as far as the reputation stuff goes she is um, task force omega tier one and i'm still working on getting her to tier two i just started that actually as of before recording this video she does not have any new car rep and she's only tier one new romulus so she's very light <laughs> on the reputation stuff um, now, um, <clears throat> as far as gear, she's pretty kitted out well. Um, what, ha what happened is I had started this character way before, well, pretty early in the game, I should say. And so she got most of her gear and most of her things uh, Borg-related prior to the reputation system being deployed in the game, back when uh, all the rewards came through playing the STS in the past and how they used to have it a long time ago was that you would play the STFs 
and at the end of the STF, and they were they were longer because they were whole, one whole thing. They've kind of split them up now. But um, you would play the entire SDF, and then you would get your reward at the end of the SDF, and it would be like the Borg console or something like that. So she does have the Borg console, and um, I do have Klingon Honor Guard, um, the Klingon Honor Guard um, Mark 11, very rare set, not Mark 12. And the reason I'm able to have the full Klingon Honor Guard set, space set, shield deflector and uh, engine again, is because I got those rewards prior to the reputation system um, back a long time ago. So um, that's why she has those without having reached tier four or five of Omega Rep, if you're wondering. Um, anyway, that aside, let's go to the shipyard. Let's equip this ship. I've already stripped my current ship or my old ship. Uh, and uh, we're all ready to go. So let's go to Transported Chief, go to Shipyard. We can equip this uh, brand new ship we just got. In fact, I already bought it from the Sea Store, and it should be waiting for me in the Ship Selector, hopefully. And just to show you what I had previously, my previous ship was the Pegku Peg Heavy Destroyer. Uh, is what I was flying before and I really enjoyed that ship that was a really fun ship I think I made videos on it but it was a really awesome ship I, I really did enjoy that ship um, so kinda sad to see it go but I liked it so we should be able to go to select ship and now I should have somewhere in here a uh, Moog not that, which is not that, nor that, nor that, nor that, nor that. Warcha. That's what I have. That's a kin. There it is, the Moog Battle Cruiser. And I like the style of it. It's very detailed. I would I, I'd say they're beefing up the detail on their starship design, which is really nice. I do like that. Alright, ready starship. Now we can equip this thing. So here's what's going to happen now that we've equipped it. I'm just going to spend some time equipping it. And it may not be the best stuff right now, but I may off camera look at doing better with it. But I can only use what I got. Again, I don't have a lot of resources. Look at this. I don't even have a million energy credits. So I don't exactly have a lot of resources to do a lot of things. Uh, so I can only use what I got. I wish I had more, but I don't. First, let's rename it. Nightmare Child. If you uh, are familiar with Doctor Who, you will have heard of the uh, Nightmare Child. And I've always liked that as a ship name, especially on the KDF side. Um, so, alright, it's recommending... Well, first of all, we have five forward weapon slots, which is just completely awesome. Um, of course, it's, re it's recommending Disruptor, because that's kind of like the base-themed weapon for KDF. But I'm not going to use Disruptor new 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 because well I don't have it in fact the best I have as you can see to the right over here is gonna be Tetrion believe it or not that's just what I have that's what I decided to go with a long time ago and um, I have not changed it since I think that I would probably change it now I would probably do something different shoot I would love a full anti-proton setup but I don't have any of those weapons either so I can only use what I got but we will do cannons because hey we're KDF we got to use cannons so first of all let's put on our Klingon honor guard stuff I love it it's a good set we'll look at the visuals and stuff in space and see how we can make it look different now the best warp core I got is the obelisk warp core from the Solanate Ice and Sphere mission um, that's just the best warp core I got I don't have a fleet warp core on this character yet so um, we will use the obelisk. It's better than a standard default warp core. Put my devices in there. Now as far as my weapons, it looks like I'm not going to have enough. Because I've never had a ship that has had five forward weapon slots on this character. So I'm going to have to get more. I do have a plasma torpedo launcher, Mark 11. And we will put my cannons here. And I'm going to have another space for something. I'm going to have to figure out... I'm going to have to go see if I can get something to fill that space with. But these cannons are Mark 11, dual heavy cannons, accuracy damage times 2, 
Uh, I wish it was the other way around, but that's what I have right now. Um, let's put the turrets in the back. I can fill all my affluent turrets. I don't have the cutting beam yet, the kinetic cutting beam from the Borg set. I do not have that yet. Put all that there, and I've even got an extra engineering slot left. Oh, I only have one science console slot. That means I cannot use both of my shield capacity uh, things. That's a shame. I would have liked to have been able to use both to beef that up. And then I have cannon weapon damage, which we will put down here. So I can fill in one more weapon slot, and I can fill in one more engineering console. So I'll have to look and see what I can get and do there. I don't know. I don't think I can afford another Mark 11. Very rare, but I'll look at it. And then another console slot. I'm not sure what I'll use. I've got my my Eps. I got my Neutronium. I could put this console up there, which is the Dynamic Defense Deployment System. I could put this up there and then fill my tactical all full of um, buffing my damage. And unfortunately, it's only cannon weapon damage. I don't have specific energy type weapon damage. But at least that allows me to use those console slots or those consoles with any weapon damage or any energy type I d decide to put on the ship. So I could switch that around and put another one of these. I could probably afford that. And then that would give me more damage. Or I could put another engineering console. I'm just not sure what I would put. Uh, it depends how slow this thing turns. I might put an RCS if it really turns slow. I'm not against that. Okay, well anyway, that's what I got for right now. And uh, off camera, I'll go back and look at um, building it up a little bit better, see what I can do. But for right now, that's what I got. Now let's do our stations. We've got a commander engineering station, and I only have one engineer? I do only have one engineer. Wow. For an engineering character, you think I'd have another engineering bridge officer, but no, apparently I've only got one. Wow. See, I really need to do a lot of work on this character. Alright, so let's put the uh, liberated Borg there, and she's got Aceton Beam 3, Directed Energy Modulation 2, Engineering Team 2, uh, Emergency Power to Weapons 1. I'll leave it for now, and may change it later. Um, okay, I've got a Lieutenant Commander Tactical. This is my highest tactical position I have, so... I um, should be set up for cannons. I do got I do have torpedo high yield too. We'll keep that. I like that. And then I do have cannon rapid fire too. We'll keep that. That's a very good build. I like that. Now, my I kind of want to use this Lieutenant Universal slot for another tactical. That way I can get a uh, cannon scatter volley in there as well. I think that's what I'm going to go for. Uh where are my other ones? Breen destruction. You don't have Scatter Valley. One of these should have Scatter Valley. Yeah, Scatter Valley. There we go. My Jim and R did. So I got two tactical teams. I'll just leave that for now. But now I at least have Scatter Volley one. So I've got two cannon abilities. Cannon Scatter Volley and then Cannon Rapid Fire. And then I'll leave Torpedo High Yield because I do like that. Now I have my Science Station. Polarize Hole and Science Team 2. I'll keep that, and then I have one other slot here, and I could use it on engineering? No, I can't use it on engineering, I don't have another engineering character. Well, I could use it on tactical, but no, I got plenty of tactical. I think I'm going to have to go with science. And I don't... Oh, who's lamer, lamer man? Oh no, that's instant tactical. I have to use it on tactical, never mind. Ooh. So if I wanted more science healing abilities, I would have to replace the Lieutenant Universal slot for the Science slot, but then I would lose Cannon Scatter Volley. Oh, choices, choices. Well, poop. <laughs> three Tactical Team 1s. I don't think I need three Tactical Team 1s. I definitely will have to do some retraining of powers. But I think I will do all of that off camera because I'm going to have to do some, some thinking about this now that I realize I don't have as many science healing abilities as I thought I was going to have. Hmm, it's going to take some brain thinking. 
Well, before the brain thinking comes, let's look at this thing in space and uh, maybe try it out in some action real quick and see, uh, see what it looks like. Then I'll spend some time with it, and then I'll get back to the STFs and see how it can really do. And long loading times for the lose. Okay, let's get into some sunlight. We have to come around the planet here, and uh, I want to get us into the light so we can look at this ship. It's so dark. Faster, faster, faster. There we go. Into the sun. Yes, yes, fly into the sun. Okay, now we can take a look at this thing. All right, first of all, I do have all the visuals enabled so let's disable all the visuals there we go oh I like it much better without the shield visual on that is so much more detailed I know it's kinda of hard to see still um, I'll get it into some better light and uh, we'll look at it even more but I can just tell you right now <clears throat> it's much more detailed without the honor guard shield visual on If we zoom into it it's, it's very detailed It's got a weird front. It's got a weird forward section here, though. I don't like this thing here. This just looks bad to me. Looks really bad. In my opinion, take out this weird looking thing here and just leave this pointed forward like it is, but take out this middle thing because that is just butt ugly, in my opinion. But if we turn the honor guard visual on, honor guard shield visual, I mean it really changes the appearance of the ship. It really dulls it out, dulls the colors out for sure. Yeah, I don't like the looks of the ship with the honor guard shield visual on. It's just not good. So we'll leave that off. Now we could leave the impulse engine uh, visuals on. Yeah, because it's got that wavering kind of uh, like heat, like really hot impulse exhaust or whatever coming out of the ship. And it's very yellow, but I think that matches the ship well. And then the deflector... I, I really don't like the way that that looks. When it comes back on here, I don't know probably end up leaving that off. Well, it's not horrible, but... Well, anyway. Definitely like it better with the shield effects off. So, let's go to um, attack mode. I always like to play in attack mode, and then we'll look at how it turns and everything. Um, my power levels are really good right now. Uh, 125 weapons, so I mean, I'm max power on weapons. 75 shield is pretty good. 50 engine, 56 auxiliary, but again, uh, do the auxiliary does the auxiliary power boost the console abilities? That's what I don't know. Perhaps somebody can answer that for me. Does the auxiliary power boost the console ability of this ship? Because if so, then maybe an emergency power to auxiliary or something would help the console powers. I don't know though. I would love to have some more healing science abilities like transfer shield strength or um, emergency power to shields. Well, now that's engineering. But I can't. Alright, um, let's put my buttons here, how I like them. I'm probably going to end up changing some of these powers anyway, but might as well get my buttons straight for right now so that I can do some battle for you guys and show you uh, th what this thing looks like in combat. I would like that. I would like to do that. Okay. I'm not sure where I'm going to put those command buttons just yet. Everybody likes their buttons in different orders, in different ways. I've got my own way. There's the dynamic defense deployment launcher. Uh, 
I don't even use mask energy field. I'm not even going to put it on there because I have a cloak. I don't need mask energy field. Waste of space. I'm just going to put one of the tactical teams on there for now. I'll probably end up changing it in the future. Wait, that's rapid fire and that's high yield. Okay, and that's scatter volley. Okay, good. Now I do have some extra space here. Let's put my command buttons there. We'll do weapons first. Then uh, shield, then strategic maneuvering. Awesome. All right, we'll do that for just right now. That'll get me through this. All right, um, what shall we do to show this thing in action? Oh, first let's look at our stats. Uh, crew complement 2,000, crew recovery rate 58.1%, live crew 2,000. Stealth detection rating 22.45, power transfer rate 193.125. Defense 52.9% bonus defense. I'm at full impulse right now. So I got a pretty good bonus defense, like more than half. <laughs> That's really awesome. Hole rate of 55. Not the best hole rate, but again, they never said it was supposed to be. 168.5% uh, hole repair. Shield regeneration rate is 147. Now my shield capacity is lower than I would like it. It's at 12.1. But I cannot put another maximum shield capacity on. I'm stuck with just one because there's only one science console. Um, so what I'll have to do is get a Mark 12 very rare one of these. That's the best I can do, but I know those are just extremely expensive, so I cannot afford it, so that's going to take forever to get. But that's ultimately what I need is just one Mark 12 very rare field generator because that's all I can put on this ship to help my shield capacity other than getting better shield. Now I like the honor guard but I do only have mark 11. I could, uh, I mean once I tear up in the Omega rep I'll go for the mark 12 set obviously but I don't have that yet so that's what I got. At least I'm getting uh, a two set bonus and a three set bonus from this but I'm not going to use mask energy field but I am getting the tactical readiness bonus which does what? A plus 25 bonus to torpedo damage, plus 8.1 auxiliary power, plus 65% resistance to crewman loss, and plus 8.1 crew recovery rate. Well, that will help my crew and stuff. I don't know if the auxiliary power is beneficial to me, but then that'll help my torpedo damage. Anyway, um, that's what I got. Okay, I think that's pretty much all that I can do for right this second. Let's see if we can queue up in uh, maybe a new Kara thing here. Do like uh, uh, Nebula Rescue. I don't know if I'll get into that fast enough. I would like to though because that way uh, I, I know what to expect in this one. It's against Tholians. It's a good test for testing your ship, I guess. Um, at least I know what to expect in it kind of my go-to thing to test things out. Hopefully we'll get queued in this real fast. I guess I'll go ahead and pause the video now. Oh no, wait a minute. Queued for oh, okay, never mind. I was going to pause the video so you guys wouldn't have to wait through that, but hey, I got in really fast. Come on, people. Accept. Just hit your accept. You know you can do it. I know you can do it. It's possible. Just hit that button. You see it on your screen right now. Hit it. Go for it. Oh, don't drop me out of this. Please don't drop me out of this. It turns really good. I'm just noticing. I'm just trying out the turn rate on it. Just turning with it right now. That actually turns really well. Yes, it's starting. Okay. That turns well. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I'll have to do it when it starts. Uh, set my weapons to auto fire. Okay, I like the turn rate on that. Nine is not a bad turn rate. I can deal. I can certainly deal. A 
Oh, that looks so good. Oh, man. That ship looks awesome. My ship looks awesome. I was going to... Where's my power? Uh, I mean, my thing. I mean, my... Why isn't my thing showing? No. You. You. That's what I want. Show. On, 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 on. Our time here is limited. On. Stay focused. Plan your attacks and save as many ships as possible. Every loss is critical for my people. Um, let's do... We'll hit one of my command modes. We'll hit the weapon one when we get up here. Cloaking. I'm getting much more used to uh, cloaking things now. Sure, use that other uh, weapon slot that I now. a little more rough than I would have liked. I am missing that fifth um, weapon forward weapon slot, so having another dual heavy cannon will certainly help once I get it on there. That, that uh, lower shield strength is definitely hurting me, though. Ooh, a five. Yeah, that lower shield strength is hurting me, and uh, let's see, what else have I discovered? Um, discovered I didn't hit the right buttons at first. I should have done scatter volley at first, but I missed, hit the wrong button, I guess. And I did try out the console. I guess it did something. So yeah, depending what. Oh, I know what it, I, I had. I had the shield frequency. Is escaping. I had the shield frequency modulation on. So what did that do with that? See, I forget what the different command modes do with it. It doesn't really tell there what it does. One of them does a tachyon beam. One is a chroniton. And what is the other one? I forgot. See, that's the problem now. I don't remember which uh, which command mode does what with the console. So I'm going to have to memorize that. I'm going to have to look at it. Here's a three. We'll try it all by myself. Probably won't do too well. I don't think my shields have healed all the way up yet. But we will go in fighting. Reduce power. Power up. We'll do a scatter volley.
didn't go as perfectly as I would have wanted. It just shows there's some room for improvement, which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. But this ship was never really meant to tank. It is meant to be offensive. Is escaping. And I think I've probably built it more tanky than it, I should be offensive. I really need better consoles. I really need energy specific consoles. Uh, so, Because I'll do more damage with energy specific consoles. And, um, and then I also need that final forward weapon slot. Remember, I'm missing that, so that will... That'll help, and I could use better weapons as well, and I need to get away from Tetrion, probably. Although, the Tetrion weapons combined with the Tachyon ability of this console, wouldn't that be... work together well? Ship is under attack. terrible it does move well the uh, movement on Artemis it is not Warbird terrible is you all know from watching my videos that I absolutely hate ships that do not maneuver well or don't turn well and I uh, gotta say this one is doing well with all of that it's turning well it's moving well and it also looks really good except for that little front thing I don't like that but other than that it looks really good so, maneuverability is not a problem with this ship. Yeah, you can really make it into a good offensive ship, I guess. Since it has five forward weapon slots. You know, that's really nice. Maneuverability is good. It's not as beefy as I want it, but I can help with that. The better shield capacitor, eventually a better shield uh, can definitely do better. Get that web, that extra weapon going. I think I may keep this ship on this character. I think I can do a lot with it. It's got potential. And I like potential. I like a ship I can build on and build up. A Delon Warbird is escaping. Yeah, you know what? This is not bad. I wasn't too sure about the Avenger on the uh, on the Federation side. And I haven't even finished my build with it. I know I made a couple of introductory videos on it, but I haven't finished that yet. Um, I wasn't too sure about that ship, but you know, this one on the KDF is not terrible.
see if we can get this one done before time runs out. I don't think you can scan these while cloaked. It'll like automatically decloak you when you start to scan. See, I'm cloaked right now. If I go to scan this and see what happens. Well, I don't even have the option. I think that one has a bug anyway. Ship is not even there. Oh well. No time, no time left. Well, that was a little introductory look at the ship. We will, of course, do a lot more with it. But that just looks, look at that detail on it. Look at that, look at that, look at that detail. Isn't that awesome? I think that's awesome. That's really good looking. Yeah, I can do more with this ship, and I'm going to. I'll spend some time with it, and then we'll make some more videos, and uh, and it'll be good. It'll all be good. But that is a in an introductory look. Let's beam. Actually, let's beam to first city. I want to look at real quick uh, the different visual. If we can change the visuals on it. Oh yes, and we'll look at the bridge. I keep forgetting to do that every every video. I always forget to show you guys the bridge, so we'll see real quick if it has a uh, unique bridge or not. Okay, first I want to go look at customizing the visuals of the ship. Just see if it, we can make it look a little more unique. See what options we have here. So we don't have a template selection. Here's a good visual of it. Boy, that looks good. Look at the detail. Um, interior, Kiram current. Now somebody tell me, is that just a standard, that's just a standard Klingon bridge, isn't it? That's not a special bridge at all. That's just a standard Klingon bridge. So, Kuv, Vit, Chav, Kempab, Batleth, Yol, Ves, Vashu, Nomat, Magka, Sabak. So, Koloth. So there is no, I see no specific Moog bridge. I would like to see a Moog bridge, but there is no Moog bridge, so that's a shame. So we can change the material now. We can do a veteran material. It's type 3 right now. We can do veteran material, because I'm a veteran, which looks like that. We can do the type 3, which is what it was. We can do a type 2. That makes it much lighter in color, but it takes away a lot of the detail. Type 1, that also takes away a lot of the detail. Type 0, again, that takes away some of the detail. So really, the Type 3 is what you want to use. That's the most detailed one. The Veteran is okay, but really that doesn't look that good. I would I would stick with the Type 3. I think that just looks best on it. Change the windows. There's three types of windows on it. I like that. It makes a big difference. So... Oh we, can, oh, we can't change the style, but we can change the pattern on it. But well, I don't find that that useful. So really, we can't do a lot to customize it. And there's no unique bridge, so there's no point in going to the bridge, because there's no unique bridge. Well, ain't that a shame. I tried. Anyway, there it is in the window. A very big ship in the window there. Well, guys, that was an introductory look at the Moog. I hope you all liked it and enjoyed that. Uh, I know that my build is not perfect. I never claimed it would be or should be or will be or will ever be perfect. <laughs> and everybody's got different ideas about how they want to build up their ships, right? And uh, I'm very limited with what I have. I can only use what I have. So unfortunately, I cannot show you all an op build. Boy, would I love to. I mean, I'd love to have just all fleet weapons and just all fleet everything and just like Dyson's uh, uh, the uh, Solanay Dyson Sphere consoles and Fleet Spire consoles and, you know, and um, just all kinds of great stuff like that. Dalithia mining consoles. I don't have all that stuff yet, so. Uh, unfortunately, I've neglected my poor Orion. Oh, she's sad. She's sad. I can, you can just, I can just tell. She's got big breasts, but she's sad still. Because I've neglected her. I haven't spent much time on you. I'm very sorry. I need to spend more time on you. And I will do that. I promise. We will get together. You and me. Yeah. 
Okay, everybody, well, stay tuned, uh, and there will be more when I can get you guys more. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next.